what you've been taught in the fitness industry is all beautiful and good. However, there's space and room for you to slow down, to give yourself grace, and to really come from a place of enjoying your body and still be able to get the results that you want. That it doesn't have to be this intense kind of constant feeling of like feeling behind, feeling like you're not doing enough. Welcome to the Brand Stars Podcast. If you're a visionary woman with a message to share and you're already the face of your brand, but would love to become the star of your brand, then you're in the right place. I'm Naomi Espent, longtime personal branding photographer, videographer, trainer, and creator of the online Brand Stars Academy. I host inspiring guests on this podcast, each an expert in their own field. And we all share a passion for helping our fellow women to shine our light and share our brilliance in the world even more brightly. So that's the golden thread goal of each episode. Let's dive in. Enjoy. Very special warm welcome to my gorgeous guest, Alison <laughs> Vernon Thompson. Welcome, Alison. Yay. Hi, thank you so much for having me. This is so uh, fun. I've been so excited to do this with you, Alison, because you have been a game changer for me. Um, for all of you watching, I have been doing Alison's online fitness classes for three times a week for the last three months, and they are fantastic. So I was just dying to share her with you all so that you can also get a little bit of this magic um, that she sprinkles around everywhere she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, it's really, it's really amazing. Talada, hi, so lovely to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. And what I'm going to do is give you just a brief intro about this lovely lady, because she's quite modest. I know she won't tell you all these amazing things. And then I'm going to hand <laughs> over to her for all the juicy tips. And this is really special. It's everything to do with feminine fitness and really getting in touch and getting to love your body, who Alison always refers to as her. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Okay, so just for all of you watching, Alison is the creator of the feminine fitness style that teaches mindful indulgence as a method to healthy living. And speaking from experience, her signature class will seduce you into an amazing workout, incorporating Pilates, bar, dance, and strength training. And she also specializes in post rehab, weight loss, and injury prevention. Uh, I'll tell you about that. It's really helped me too. We'll get to that later. Remind me if I forget. And remind me about the booty twirls. Talana, I've got a really cute story about that. <laughs> um, but before we get there, previously, Alison and her very hunky husband co-owned a personal <laughs> training gym in New York City called Tribeca Health and Fitness. And that was a hub for independent personal trainers. And Alison is a New York State Board Certified Health Coach, an ACE Certified Personal Trainer, an ACE Certified Health Coach, accredited Pilates mat instructor and a graduate of the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. And nutrition is another thing we will touch on, Alison, I believe. Um, very helpful, ladies. And she has had the honor of appearing as a fitness instructor on CNN Live, Good Morning America, and at Whole Foods Immersion Retreats with Dr. Scott Stoll. As a WNBF figure pro, Alison has <laughs> the body, ladies. She really practices what she preaches. Um, she appeared on the cover of Natural Bodybuilding and Fitness Magazine and has been featured in other USA magazines and websites, including Self, Fitness, NBC, and Best Body Magazine. And she graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Dance Performance from Columbia College. So Talana and everyone else watching, dance comes into this. And this is where the beauty twirls come in. You're going to love this. Okay, so um, that was from Columbia College in South Carolina with an emphasis on kinesiology. And she taught as an adjunct professor at Columbia College. And she focuses on proper biomechanics and injury prevention due to her experience with personal injuries and teaching dance. And Alison, I believe that you have also worked with uh, orthopedic surgeons and a lot with recovery, that type of thing. So we'll touch on that too. Um, because for me, uh, it was actually wonderful. I had a quite a bad back injury, random, don't mm -hmm. know how it happened, but I think it was about six weeks before I joined your classes. And I had literally been taking painkillers and anti inflams like mm. twice a day for six weeks, which was unheard of in all my life, never done it before. And it's completely healed. Thank you. And I do think a lot has to do with 
the core strength that we were Yay! doing. <laughs> yes. yes, which my husband always says because he's had back injuries from motorbike racing and he said, you better get your core sorted, girl. Get in Alison's classes. So, Alison, I want to hand over to you. Enough of my talking. Um, please, would you, Talana, yay, I love Boogie. As, yes, Talana, you will love this. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm going to come back to Boogie because I can't help myself. Um, but, but Alison... <laughs> If I can hand over to you, gorgeous, and if you can just give our viewers a bit of an introduction about what inspired you and what has led you to come to do all these amazing things that you do today. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. And I have to say, Naomi, thank you so much for having me on. And it has been so such a pleasure getting to booty twirl with you and uh, do the workout. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, and for that grand introduction, we did own a gym um, in Manhattan until quite recently. And prior, I've been in the fitness industry like 16, 17 ish years. And throughout that time, and during the time of owning this gym and everything, there was always a part of me that felt very kind of slightly out of place because of the bro culture in the gym. It's very like, kill it, destroy it, do it, we're working hard. And even the women in the industry, so other female trainers, were very much like that too. Like, so like on it with their workout, no matter how they feel, I, I know I can bring it, I know I can do it, and they're destroying themselves. And this never really resonated with me. So I was, I love to work out. I love it, love it. But I often will have days where I'm like kind of feeling smushy, as I say, and I just want to like stay in the corner and like be chill do a little yoga stretching and like maybe i'll work my way up to up to the workout but the idea of just coming straight in and like going crazy and always feeling like i had to give 110 percent as they say in the industry <laughs> was just didn't work for me and so a lot of the methods that i use developed out of this sort of my own pain point with this and also my own curiosity with, okay, well, if I don't always want to give 110%, if I don't always have that, how can I, mm. how can I still progress? How can I still get the joy and the progression, the progress that I want both for myself and for clients? And so that's kind of yes. how it was all born. And I love that. I, was, I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to just say that mm -hmm. you, you really, you find this middle point so beautifully because um, through COVID since last year, I used to do park running and gymming for years and years. I met Dave in the gym, as I know you met your gorgeous husband in the gym. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about with this push yourself hard. But then I also can go to the other extreme. So when I was by myself throughout COVID, I was doing my yoga exercises, but and quite often, I mean, sometimes daily, but I didn't push myself at all. I was like, you know, I was doing the ones that I really enjoyed. And um, so that's what I found with you. The accountability is a huge thing, but also it's just a beautiful blend because it's also really effective strength-wise what you do. Yes, yes. Well, I think once we find that sweet spot where we've sort of married together this slow introduction, and that's why I like to use the word seduction mm. because sometimes you're not ready to just come straight in and go, you know, do your typical warm up and go for it. Maybe you're not feeling like that kind of high energy, high vibe thing that day. You just want to take it a little easier. And I think when we give ourselves permission to do that and say, okay, well, I'm going to really ease in, um, it can be kind of powerful. And so that's what the class does is, is take those yoga things that you were doing, Naomi, where you felt like, oh, I wasn't really pushing myself, but you sort of progress slowly into where by the end, the class really escalates up and we get a great workout, but we kind of start nice and slow. Yes, I love that. And so with all the women that you've trained, Alison, what did you see as the primary benefits for us as women in terms of training in this way, like aligned with our femininity and our own bodies, as opposed to the bro culture? <laughs> yes, you know, that's such a good question. I I think that the primary thing that we learn is that we really learn to honor our bodies and honor ourselves. And when we tune into enjoying our body, instead of feeling that there's something we need to change or an obligation, I should be working out, I should be doing this. And we just tune into 
how to enjoy how she feels, how your body feels to move around. And when we say, oh, you know what? My body as a woman is very different than a male body. And if I honor that, if I give myself grace, that over time, you will actually have cumulative effects by even if some days you only have 10% to give and other days you have 110% days, you're cu cumulatively, it will grow into something really amazing and you will see changes in your body and you will feel more connected to her and be more in a place of joy around our body. And I, I think that is often the missing piece is that we kind of come at fitness from a standpoint of, I have to do this. I don't really enjoy it. Instead of just saying like, well, what do I enjoy? And then making that right that's correct for you. And then learning to kind of grow and progress from there. Yes, this is gorgeous. I love every word you're saying. Talana, I hope this is <laughs> resonating with you too and the, any of the rest of you who are watching or watching the replay. And I want to drop in this boogie story quickly because I just love the way you speak, Alison, about, about really loving your body. And she's female, as you say. Um, and that <laughs> just, oddly enough, that was quite new for me. I've done I can't even tell you how many fitness classes over all the years. I mean, I've been in, you know, doing gym forever. I've never taught, but I've always done it. And yoga and all of that. And I've never heard, okay, so pull your knee in and give her a hug, you know. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's beautiful because it really does make you think in this fashion. And so quick story, Solana, you'll enjoy this. I've been doing the classes in our living room. And Dave was amazing. He set up the connection with my laptop into the big screen TV. So you can imagine me in the living room with Alison on the big TV and the other ladies there <laughs> in the Zoom class. And um, the kitchen, it's open plan. So it's all there. So Solana says, yes, it's so hard to get active when it's so cold. Ah, yes, another good point. So finding gentle Yoga. ways to get going should help. Fantastic points, Talana. And Really good point. Thing. So what happened the other day, um, so my whole living area is open pan with a kitchen. So it's all turned into a bit of a dance studio for me. Thanks to Alison. So I was, making I, dinner. Yeah, I was making dinner the other evening and um, I was making a vegan mince actually because I'm vegetarian and I had a bit of wine in there. So I had a little tiny glass of wine, maybe like a, not even half a glass. And I was boogieing and booty twirling all over the kitchen to the extent that Dave came in at one point and he said, are you drunk? <laughs> and I wasn't at all. It was so funny because this is what's happened for me. I've been enjoying my body such a lot. It actually happened at 5 a.m. in the shower even. I found myself doing booty tools. We were going to a shoot out of town and I needed to get up early. And there I was, like warming up in the shower. It was fab. So, <laughs> Alison, you're amazing with that. <laughs> and... The other thing that I found is, so, so we've been, we're in different time zones. So, Alison, you are six hours behind us and you're close to New York. Am I right? Yes. And so with that, what I love also about your class is that um, you go, yes, thanks, Talana. Oh, it's so fun. I promise you. Uh, I can see you doing this, Talana. So, Alison, for you just to know as well, Talana, she's also in great shape. Talana, do you, are you a runner? I'm trying to think what your main sport is, but I know you're a jumper. She does these beautiful photos of herself leaping, um, wow. which is amazing. Yeah. Um, cool. She did it with a whole group of little children in Africa somewhere. They were doing some project, and all of them were like leaping off the ground. So I that love was that. Amazing. Yeah. So, Alison, yeah, so what I wanted to mention is that um, it's lovely because, so for me, it was four o'clock in the afternoon when it's, what time for you, 10 a.m. and was it 10 in the morning for you? And yeah. 7 a.m. for some of the ladies also in our group, including our gorgeous mutual friend, Kate Trimmels, who I hope will watch <laughs> the replay, um, who's in the Pacific time. And for each of us, we're at a different time of day. Can you speak a little about that, Alison, about, about the different times of the day and the different yeah. times of the week and the different times of the month? Um, Talana yeah. says, oh, she does Tai Chi. Oh, fabulous, Talana. Ooh, she I love her it. Ankle, she hurt her ankle running, so she hasn't got back into it. Okay, so you could maybe speak a little bit about the ankle rehab then as yeah. well, Alison. Can I yeah, hand over absolutely. to you? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm so sorry that you have an injury, Talana, if I, am I saying your name correctly. Um, yeah, injuries are just the worst, so annoying. And that's kind of how I segued into um, I was a, I was on a track, a dance, professional 
to dance professionally and, and got injured and actually with my ankle as well. And that's when I segued into uh, Pilates and fitness and physical therapy and all of these things that really made me just fall in love with the body in a different way. Like it's just really remarkable what our bodies are capable of and also capable of with healing. So I wish you all the best with your healing of your ankle. And I love Tai Chi. That is so beautiful. And to segue into Naomi's question and link it to this, it's that there are seasons, there are times, there are times of day where you need to really be more gentle with your body. And the fitness industry for so long has really given us this impression that we have to give it this drive all the time, even when you're maybe recovering from an injury, right? Well, you have to be so, you know, on it with your physical therapy. And, and that's true. Um, you know, you do need to be consistent. But also, we don't always allow ourselves, give ourselves permission to listen to how we're feeling in that moment, perhaps a 7 a.m. workout class is never going to work for you and you always, always want to work out later in the day or certain times of day are going to feel much better when you engage in doing the physical therapy or whatever the activity is. I think when we take a second to tune in and say, okay, what would just feel good that we get out of our head, we get out of the place of analyzing what the best form of exercise is and how much I should do and when I should do it and all the stuff we just say, like, what would feel good? When would it feel best during my day to do this physical therapy? What amount of time would feel good? And then start there, even if that means you only want to do it for, you know, three minutes or something for the first two days. If that's what you have, then that's beautiful and perfect and good. And then trusting ourselves, this is the other piece, that we will grow and expand, that we will come to a place where we want and desire to do more. And I, and there's, I think often women have been taught to disengage from that, that we have this lack of, well, that we don't uh, trust ourselves, that we are, have been taught not to, that we don't know what's best for ourselves. Instead of tuning in and saying, what feels right? and really connecting to how it feels instead of getting so stuck in our head. Did that answer your question, Naomi? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for the pause. I was looking for my little dual screen click here. Um, thank you, Alison. Yes, and that's very much what I've experienced with you. And I, I think one of the things, you know, you mentioned that as women, we, often, we don't trust ourselves necessarily. And one of the things I think as well is that we've possibly disappointed ourselves in the past in terms of um, really consistency and really prioritizing fitness in particular, particularly when we get super busy. And I don't even mm -hmm. have children, but I mean, when I think about moms with children as well, right. I'm like, I don't know how you fit it all in. Although mm -hmm. some of the ladies in your class have their little babies with them even, which is amazing. <laughs> um, so can you share with us, what do you see, what have you seen mostly with your clients as typical blocks that we face mm -hmm. as women to really prioritizing our fitness? And how can we overcome those, you know, to really get it on track? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, I find, I guess, two things seem to be the primary blocks that I see. One is pleasure and one is time. And time is what you were just touching on, that we have often women have a lot of other people in their lives that they're caring for, whether it's children or grandchildren, I see a lot, or um, husbands, friends, whatever, we're often giving to others. And so not perhaps always allowing ourselves to take the time that we need for ourselves. So which segues me to pleasure. So when we tune into our own pleasure, when we tune into our own self care, and we say, this is equally as important. It's equally as important that I care for my own nutrition, not just pack the lunches for my children, that my own nutrition has as much value and importance. And when we take that time to stop and think about that, about how to tune into our own needs and our own desires, I find that when you're coming from that place, it's a, it's a beautiful place connected to your highest self. When you're saying, what workout would feel the most pleasurable to me? What nutrition, what lovely meal could I make for myself that would be the most nourishing for myself and also my family? You know, it's not, it's not instead of, and I see that quite a lot too, that I think there's this feeling of taking away from 
giving to the children or giving to the husband or, or whomever you might have in your life right now. And um, it's kind of more of a, a yes and. It's yes, I can care for my children and I can take the same amount of time or, or try to prioritize giving the same amount of time that it takes to pack the lunch for my child as it would to pack my own lunch. And this is a, just a reframing of, of time. And it, it is not easy. I'm not, I by no means am trying to, you know, make it sound easy. But when you come from a place of saying, how can I enjoy, how can I add pleasure? How can I take care of myself? How can I add more joy and enjoy my body more? The outlook is different. And the last thing I want to say on this point with time, which is, I think, incredibly powerful, and I've done this a few times in my life, personally as well, is that I will distill the thing down to the absolute smallest amount of time I, it will take, meaning I'll take it turned into a mini habit. So if you have a desire to work out and everywhere you look for however many years, they're telling you, you have to work out for 45 minutes a day or whatever the nonsense that all the things are pushing, right? And you just say, I'm ignoring that. And instead, I only can give 60 seconds. Well, if you take your baby <laughs> and hold them in your arms and do 10 squats, and that's all you can do, and that's all you have time for, I promise you, you will see a difference after doing that for two weeks. Because your body will, it, it's like dying, it loves that kind of activity. It's a moment you're still having time with your child, and you're taking care of yourself. And you will notice that on week two, you can do 15 squats instead of 10. And, and suddenly that mini habit just starts to grow into something bigger. You feel stronger. You're ready to take on more. And so I think giving ourselves permission, this can be distilled down to the littlest, easiest, so easy that you almost feel like it's silly version of itself and giving and making that okay. I love that, Alison. It's so true. And I mean, I'm just thinking about myself as you're speaking. That is a definite stumbling block for me because I never think in terms of, I'll just do a few things right here in my jeans. I don't have to change into my outfit, you know, my, my tights yeah. or whatever. I can just do it right here. And yes. exactly what you say, you will start feeling that difference. So um, I love that. And um, I'm just thinking, Shame, I'm just feeling that I didn't give Talana quite enough time possibly about her ankle because I know that you, you're so good with the, with the injury side of things, Alison, and you're always joking yeah. about giving people Christmas presents off your foam rollers and things. And I just wondered before I forget, if you'd like to just mention possibly a little bit about the rehab um, and just, you know, maybe touch on it with Talana. Talana is such a great tip. Yeah, just doing a few squats when you have a minute. Absolutely. And just, just for anyone else who might also have an injury, because I know that you're very skilled in that area too. Yeah, so it's hard to speak specifically to any one injury since I'm not sure all the details, but generally speaking, I find injuries fascinating. And in my classes, I like to try to offer modifications so that no matter what someone might be working through, that I can make it accessible to them. And when you do this, you'll notice that, of course, everyone can get stronger, but also it's more inclusive. We have people of all different ages and, um, and athletic abilities because you can always modify something to make it a little more user-friendly for an injury or make it harder. And so I, being in that kind of mindset and frame of mind, and also giving yourself, I know I keep coming back to this word, but with injuries often, no one wants to be injured. We always want to be feeling better. And so when you're in the place of being injured, we are all often like rushing. I know I, know I can only speak for myself. I've had many injuries back from especially the dancing days. And I would always want it to be over. And I think just sinking in and giving yourself the same grace I was talking about earlier and allowing yourself to slow down. I don't think we often give ourselves permission to just slow down. So I would be happy to speak to any specifics around, um, around the ankle injury that she's experiencing and, you know, anything, anything I could do to help, I'm happy to, or transition if she's in physical therapy now, transitioning to something else. Yes. So, so Talana has actually commented, thanks Talana. I think there's a bit of a time lag. So we probably aren't quite real time with each other. So Talana has made a lovely comment. She said, it's okay. I had a good physio, so I have got it much better, but I'm nervous about running again. 
So mm. any tips on gaining confidence in a healed part oh. when we're worried about re-injury again? Yeah, so. that is so good. I Honestly, what I've done personally and with clients is similar to what we were just talking about, making it a mini habit. So perhaps walking, of course, would be like a, maybe a good place to start. Just making sure that the heel, that that full follow through the heel to the toe, that simply walking in a way where you're, it's a very repetitive for 10 minutes, 15 minutes that you don't have, that doesn't recreate the pain or cause um, any kind of pain for you. But I would also advise that when you do start, I like to use a, a song list. So I will take a song list and I'll, I'll do one fast song or fun, you know, like upbeat song and then one really low key song so that you're getting the, the cue, you know, through the music too, to slow down. And then if you can do it outdoors or, you know, if you have access to some sort of treadmill, then either way, you can run for the length of one song, you know, two and a half minutes, three minutes, and then rest, take a nice slow walk and just make that perfect and okay. And do it, do that. That alone is a beautiful workout for anyone who's wanting to start running and, and make it good, make it good and right and perfect. And don't, you know, criticize it. Just be like, this is all I'm doing. I'm doing two songs of running and five songs of quiet walking and that's it and that's going to be perfect you know and oh, I love, in. That. love that and I love the way that you use music in your classes Alison too it's beautiful <laughs> and meditation <laughs> which we'll touch on just now Talana I hope that resonates with you I can imagine you actually doing that with music <laughs> Um, and, and just taking that a little deeper, Alison, also. So, you know, I'm very passionate and, and most of us in our community is very passionate about helping our fellow women to really shine their light and share their brilliance in the world. So do you have any tips for us all on how to really develop a beautiful, radiant relationship with our bodies? Because that yeah. is fundamental to shining our light in the world. Yes, it really is. I'm passionate about this, too. I'm really passionate about women enjoying their bodies. So I appreciate you, Naomi, and um, your mission with this. My number one thing is feel, don't think. So anything that connects you to feeling in your body more and getting out of your head is great. So dancing, Naomi and I talk about these booty twirls all the time. We do a lot of booty twirls and, um, and hip movement because I find that when women are up in here in whirly twirly brain, as I call it, and you just take it and you move it down into your hips and you let yourself dance, that you actually feel so much better. You can release things that you couldn't release before, but it helps you to learn to enjoy your body. So hip movements, I love twirling, I love dancing. Um, anything in water, so as far as just learning to enjoy your body, getting in water, let yourself soak, let yourself feel how it feels when the shower is like just running over your face, over your body, the warmth of that water. Stretching. I love the feel when you just put on a quiet song or no music, if you prefer, and stretch. Give yourself, you know, three minutes to lay on the floor and listen to a meditation song and stretch. It helps you to connect to your body. Um, breath work. So I recently had um, one of my dear yogi friends come on to teach alternate nostril breathing which is a technique of, of breathing through one nostril at a time where it's very deep cleansing breath breath work will help you to connect into your body what i find is that we're in this in this place where we we have a lot of discussion it's very cerebral around loving your body and we've been conditioned since birth really about how our body should work how it should look what we should do to make it look that way and all this stuff and if we just get out of our head and into our body take it from being a cerebral place into a feeling, a kinesthetic place, that it, it helps us to connect into what brings us joy. And just, again, giving yourself permission to slow way down in those moments. Give yourself that dance break. Give yourself the hip twirl. Give yourself the stretch. And you will feel over time that you can uh, enjoy your body more. And treat it almost like a meditation. It is not going to be easy. It's not easy even for me. And I've been doing this for a while. It's you have to kind of build it into your day. Like, okay, I'm putting on, I'm doing a dance break for three minutes. And over time, you will learn and feel it. I mean, the moment you do it, you'll feel joy. You'll feel more connected to your body. But over time, it helps you to feel more and more confident and joyful in your body. 
So true. I love all of those points. And Solana also says, yes, thanks. She's going to give that a try with the music. Music is incredible. I mean, it can change things like that. But yeah. I'm, I'm very guilty of being all cerebral and in my head. And I, I can find it very challenging to disengage from that and get into my yeah. body. So that's why I've got to say it was really quite a breakthrough for me to be doing hip trailing in the showers, <laughs> in my shower. So that was combining the water thing. And ladies, Alison has yeah. the sexiest, most gorgeous photo. Her husband, by the way, is a very good photographer. If you follow <laughs> Alison on social media, you'll see he takes beautiful photos of her. And she's gorgeous, <laughs> of course. And I just love that pic, Alison, of you. Obviously, well, from the back in the rain, naked in the rain outside. I just love that. And I saw you got beautiful response to it as well. I did, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a funny moment of just like, okay, I'm feeling really in my head. I'm in whirly twirly, which is my default. Whirly twirly brain is my default place. And, you know, what, what can I do in this moment to make me connect back to my body? And oh. we were sitting by the window and it started raining. I was like, I need to. <laughs> it was a moment of just reconnecting. I love it. It's so true. That thing about getting in your body. So do you, apart from me, do you have any other stories to share with regards to your clients who've had breakthroughs, you know, with regard to their fitness and their relationships with their bodies, that sort of injuries, maybe what, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, a couple people come to mind, particularly with pain, healing uh, back injuries and pain. I think there is a combo of the type of workout that it is, which incorporates some Pilates and yoga and also strength training. But I also think there's something to be said for taking that moment to slow down and, um, and connect to our bodies. And that when we do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's coming from a place of like, you know, the angel singing and that's why you got healed because you slowed down. But it does mean that we sometimes when we slow down in one aspect of our life, it holds the space. It creates the vibe, I guess, of slowing down in other areas. It can be kind of powerful in that way. It can help you to shift in other areas of your life. You know, we've all seen this before. Like you start, you accomplish one goal and suddenly you're, you're eager to change something in another area of your life. So, so okay, so back to the story. One particular client uh, was on pain meds every day. Um, similar to what you were experiencing, she had been on them for years, like years and years. And she was very overweight and through the process of slowing down, connecting to this more feminine style of movement for her, her, she was able to get rid of all the pain meds and um, several other prescriptions she was taking as well that were surrounding this pain and really healed her back pain. And, uh, you know, I have to give her a lot of credit for really slowing down and taking care of herself. And then also what I see is that we, because we have in our mind that more is better with fitness and with the intensity. What I see is that with really um, strong personality types who are like, okay, well, if more is better than, than more is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do more, more, more. That what happens with that, with people who approach their fitness that way is that when, when there's a weight loss component to it as well, it puts the body under tremendous amount of stress. Like I had a one particular client, she was uh, working out multiple times a day because she was so focused on like more is better. And, um, over time, I was convincing her to slow down, slow down, slow down, stop doing two spin classes a day, etc. And she actually began to lose weight, whereas when she was doing more, she was not losing weight. And there's many reasons that this can be, but um, stress, when you're stressing your body, when you're working out, it actually is increasing your cortisol, it is creating a stress response in the body, and that can inhibit weight loss. So it seems counterintuitive, but knowing the sweet spot of the amount of workout that works for you and that's going to help your body to thrive is really a beautiful thing to figure out. And that's what we were working on with her. And then she was able to lose weight after slowing down and <laughs> doing a more feminine style approach to the workout. That's magic. I love that story, Alison. And it really resonates with me from what I've heard before too. So I'm very blessed that I've inherited my mom's genetics. So I've never had weight issues, but I have heard that the correlation between exercise and weight loss and what you eat and weight loss, there's like big distinctions there. Can you yeah. share that a bit for any of our viewers who might be interested in that aspect 
um, and how yeah. you go about helping women from a weight loss perspective. Yes, um, exercise is powerful and we all need to be doing it because your body will feel better, you will feel more connected to your body and it is a piece of the puzzle when it comes to weight loss, but nutrition is much more powerful. And so the number one, so I teach this indulgent approach to nutrition. And what I mean by that is, so I've said this recently in a post Naomi and I chatted about is that within our lifetimes, the science of nutrition has exploded because it's a relatively new science, it's new research. And what's happened with that is that we've been inundated with so much information as it's developing. And so it can be very confusing, <laughs> just like an onslaught of information. And so what I advise is eat whole foods, meaning foods that don't come in a package, the whole ingredient food and single ingredient foods, meaning like just the broccoli, not the broccoli, you know, in, in like a broccoli chip or whatever. They have these things now, right? Like <laughs> these, these chips have 15 ingredients and one of the ingredients is broccoli. So therefore it's the broccoli chip. Um, so, you know, eating the whole food most of the time and then indulging in what you want so much because I know that within each of us and for myself, there is something that I am craving. Like I just really, really want most recently this strawberry shortcake cupcake. Now I could have had five different I could have had a healthy granola bar. I could have had like all these other things, but none of them were, were the thing I wanted. And what I find is that when you just indulge in the thing that you want the most, thoughtfully, you thoughtfully indulge in that yummy, yummy, yummy thing, then you don't have the cravings in the same way because a lot of times the cravings are coming from this place of depriving ourselves. So saying, okay, well, I'm going to indulge in the most amazing, delicious thing I want you know, a couple times a week or whatever it is, but go all in those couple times. The rest of the time, I'm going to nurture myself and nourish myself with beautiful whole foods. But you're not depriving yourself. You're not cutting yourself off from those foods that are your most favorite. And in that place, when you find this kind of, there's this beautiful dance that happens of finding just that right amount of indulgence that feels good and that works for your body where you can maintain weight or lose weight and not feel constantly in a state of deprivation. Yes, I love that. Thanks, Alison. And you <laughs> sure. helped me. I'm going to mention this too, because you helped me also, because I was going through a period where I was, and generally I eat really well, but I was going through a period where I was craving chocolate, specifically mm. dipped flakes, <laughs> but, but not once a week. It was like after every lunch and dinner almost. And I was reading one of your Instagram posts, and then we chatted about it in, our, in one of the Q&As in the classes. Um, and you were talking about the, the different reasons your body might be craving that thing. And I just wondered if you could just touch on that for our viewers, because it might be helpful for them too. If any of you like me might be craving chocolates, <laughs> because I actually managed to break the craving. And it was what you were saying. It was that hollow, deprived feeling that I was feeling. Um, and so if you'd just like to maybe touch on that for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, sugar in particular is powerful. It, we will think we're not being driven by, by sugar, but we can be. So when you have blood sugar crashes, you're going to crave something, you're going to be hungry. And so making sure that you're not eating a lot of sugar will absolutely stabilize your blood sugar and make it far easier. Knowing why you're craving the thing is important. So is it the sugar? Is it that you haven't indulged in what you really want? Is it that you might feel bored in some way in our life? We, this happens to everyone. I think we, we stigmatize this as if it's not normal, but it's very, very normal that you might go through a time where you're like a little bored, a little restless, and then you do what I call drive-by snacking. You just go to the fridge, you go to the pantry, and you just like drive by and pick, you know, a little bit, little bits of this and that. And you're not, actually not, tuning in to the fact that there's something else going on with you, perhaps boredom over something else. Um, other reasons that you can crave sugar, when your blood sugar crashes, it will definitely cause a sugar craving. So if you're eating in an erratic way where it's not consistent meal times, that can contribute to it. Also sleep, that's a huge one. So mm -hmm. if you are really, really tired, 
uh, you didn't sleep great the night before, you will be triggered to snack, mm -hmm. you'll be triggered to eat more because your brain is just searching for, um, for energy. Um, and also hormonal changes. So women within our lifetimes, whether we're talking about our period cycle, monthly um, childbirth and nursing and uh, into menopause, we go through a lot of changes in our hormones, hormonal fluctuations, and hormonal fluctuations can absolutely contribute to cravings. And so being aware of that. And so for those who still have their period, knowing when you're most likely to have what I call the beast of endless hunger come, come and arrive. So it's usually about five days before your period. And I call it the beast because it's like, like suddenly you just want to eat everything. Like it's not enough. You just need more. And so knowing when, uh, when your body is most likely to go through that cycle and not be caught off guard with it, just know like, oh, this happens every month. It's part of the grace of you know, loving on myself, and I know I'm going to have more sugar cravings, I'm going to be hungrier, how can I prepare meals and snacks and things so that I'm ready? And same thing when women go through later phases in life with menopause, there's a lot of hormonal changes, and just giving yourself grace as your body changes, knowing what's going to work and what's not going to work, and, and, and giving yourself an opportunity to experiment, because the hormonal changes will change your appetite. Yes, absolutely. I love the the golden thread that you share with us always about giving yourself grace and yeah. also how you say, do you hashtag do you um, that's magic. And that's actually just triggered a thought because I know you got involved recently in a, a wonderful, um, it, it was a project for upliftment of underserved girls. Was it? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm really excited about it. So I do say in class all the time, do you? <laughs> Okay, kind of what I was saying before about energy. You know, some days you only have 10% to give. Some days you have 110%. Ride that wave, whatever it is, and do you. And so when I started out with Fitness for Change, I connected with this organization. Just through Instagram, I met them. They're a lovely women-run organization. Their whole thing is also about do you. And what they do is serve underserved girls and underserved communities. And they bring art programs to these women or to these young girls. And uh, so arts is really was what sort of brought me to New York in the first place um, was to dance in the arts. So I have a special place in my heart for that. And these women are just incredible. And I collaborated with them, did some vlogs and some mini workouts for them because they create t-shirts and products that say, do you, hashtag do you or do you on the bag. And um, so they're all about self-love and teaching this to these young girls. So it's pretty a cool company. I'm excited to collaborate with them. Oh, that's amazing. So you're going to be wearing their t-shirts and, and, oh, and don't forget, you have an online store with sexy workout gear. Is that yeah. how it ties in? Are you going to be including that in your store? Just explain to us how that works. Yeah. So I'm not going to be selling their clothing directly, but anyone can go and purchase through Stuck Designs, that's the company name, S-T-U-K Designs, and they have um, all types of t-shirts and bags and stuff, and all the proceeds go towards this program. So it's right. a completely a nonprofit. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm not selling it, more just helping them get some traction going. They mm -hmm. also um, work as an affiliate with me. So anyone who signs up through them, they receive kickbacks. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a, a lovely way to we, we give back. And yes, and I do have an online store unrelated to Stuck Designs, but I believe that when we wear something that we feel cute or fun or sexy or beautiful or whatever our feeling word is during our workout, so we also have sometimes a better workout. You know how that is when you're like, oh, I got yes. to work. Now I feel like kind of juicy during this workout. And so, um, yeah, so I do have an online store and we have some really – Super cute stuff in there um, with leggings, the workout gear, cute tops that transition from, you know, the gym to yes. your regular life. So, yeah. They are. They, they're so sexy because I've seen you in so many of them in the past. So, Alison, you know, it's just, it really draws me in the way that you integrate all these beautiful things in what you do. And you do that in the class and also beyond the class. So, in the class, it's just so juicy. The whole feminine approach, we start with the meditation, you have beautiful music, we do the booty twirls, we dance, we do strength training, all of that. And then you have the store and you have your community of amazing women. Um, and then also you do your social responsibility. 
And I believe you're looking at, or you've started a membership program. So, oh, and you've got your Facebook group. So can you just explain how you tie all of this together and how <laughs> ladies can connect with you and, and engage and benefit from these amazing things that you offer? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Please come get to know me um, better. You know, I always feel like it's nice to ease in. <laughs> so if you'd like, you can just come find me on Instagram. It's my full name, Allison Vernon Thompson. Well, on Facebook, of course, you can follow me there. Uh, I do free little mini workouts a few times a week. And then I also try to bring content, not just for myself, but other women in the entrepreneur wellness world um, so that we can all share that wisdom and, and juice. So that's all there. All that is free. I have two different memberships. I have the one, which is the live classes. So it's Zoom classes. So you're in your home, but it's live. And that's what Naomi's been doing. And that's a fun uh, way to connect to community. And we have our own private Facebook group. And that you can sign up. You can come and try a week for free. You can come for our Friend Friday, which is a complimentary um, class that we do on Fridays. And then most recently, I am adding this video membership, which is so mm -hmm. if the if the live classes don't work for you, this option is one that you can do anytime on your own. And that will be dropping video content every week with new classes and a Q&A. Oh. So that's the other thing. We'll do a Q&A mm -hmm. with the group of people who do the video membership where they'll get live access to me once a month. That's wonderful. And is there anything else that you'd like to share or a final thought that you'd like to leave with our lovely viewers um, to help inspire them on their yeah. fitness journeys? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think if there was only one thing to take away, it would be that what you've been taught in the fitness industry is all beautiful and good. However, there's space and room for you to slow down, to give yourself grace, and to really come from a place of enjoying your body and still be able to get the results that you want. That it doesn't have to be this intense kind of constant feeling of like feeling behind, feeling like you're not doing enough and feeling like when you go, it has to be so hard. You know, it, yeah. when you go to work out, that it has to be really intense and hard. Um, that what you're doing is beautiful and perfect and just do let yourself do that little bit and then and it'll be good and make it right you know make it right for yourself yeah, yeah. i love that Alison, because i have i've been very guilty of this in the past of thinking okay so i only have 40 minutes or whatever to do this i might as well give it the best bang for the buck you know and in the long term it doesn't serve you know it might be right. i might be going to work out today but it's not serving and the, and it's that feeling as well that you're talking about where you you're almost feeling you're not good enough you know, mm -hmm. what your, your exercise program is not good enough and you're letting yourself down and, and that's that constant sense of that sort of hollow feeling. Um, yeah, it's like guilt. It's yes. like guilt and shame, like, oh, I could have done yeah. better, but I didn't feel yeah. great. And Yeah, mm -hmm. and if the, uh, I don't know if you've seen, there's, um, there's a list of sort of hierarchy of emotions and guilt and shame are at the very, very bottom um and along with sort of depression and that but i think guilt and shame are right there and then if we can move that all the way up to love at the top yeah um, and loving our bodies and loving what we're doing and feeling great yeah. about what we're doing i mean how yeah much? yeah exactly that is yeah, well, exactly yeah. it that's so beautiful exactly and and even just appreciate like day by day as it happens so that we don't beat ourselves up if it's not a constant thing Yes. Yeah. Because like you said, you might go and feel like you always have to give 45, you know, you have these 45 minutes, you have to give so much during that time and knowing that you'll have spicy days where you want yeah. to do a lot. And then yeah. you're going to have days that you don't feel as spicy and that's okay. And um, so I think that's the thing. It's like letting it be riding the wave of your energy and knowing yes. that when you ride that wave, you are doing it right. It's mm. kind of the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I love that. And the same with all of us in the world in terms of our businesses and what we're doing with COVID. <laughs> and kudos, kudos to you as yeah, I mean, kudos, just a little shout out as we as we wrapping up to you for transitioning your business into the online space too, because it's something that, you know, mo nearly all of us are, are having to address and get involved in. And so yeah. I'm excited for you 
to thank you. <laughs> yeah, hasn't it been a wild <laughs> ride? I mean, pre-COVID, we were in a brick and mortar business in New York City, you know, and now we're you know, it's just like it's so wild for all of us. We've all been transitioning yeah. during this crazy year, year and a yeah. half. <laughs> yeah. And so let's celebrate all of us being online. And I love that, Alison. Yeah. And I just love what you do. And I, again, I've been, it's been game changing for me. And I've said to you so many times that, you know, yeah. as I've joined your class, I've said to you, I'm so grateful for this because I know if I was just going to go by myself to get in the car and go to gym, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so for me, it really works. And I think for probably a lot of you ladies out there watching, I imagine that it will also work for you. So have a look, check out Alison's classes. It's a little highlight that you can have in your week. And exactly as she's been saying, over time, it fundamentally kind of changes your relationship with your body. And that's the thing. Um, so uh, I'm so grateful to you, Alison. Thank you for everything you've done for me in the classes and also for being on live with me here today. It's, oh my I really appreciate you fun. taking the time. Yeah, this is so fun. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure and a joy. Talana says, thanks, Alison and Naomi. I hope to try and join in the class sometime. Wonderful. Naomi's Absolutely. enthusiasm has got me inspired. Yay! Thanks, Yay. Talana. Good. It's very genuine enthusiasm. This lady is amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it for you. If you did, please share this podcast with your women friends, leave us a review, and subscribe. We'll be most grateful to get the message out to more visionary women who want to become the star of their brand. And here's to you becoming the star of your brand. To help you with that, hop over to brandstarscourse.com and grab your free online course to get started. Then join us for the next podcast episode. Thank you for being part of our Brand Stars community and have a radiant rest of your day.